Hello! Welcome back to another episode of Vindaga Games. Today, we're going to be making a rock. And no, not one of these. One of these. Here is what it looks like according to the official Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. It is a gargantuan bird of prey. So, without further ado, let's get started on the project. So I did a quick Google search on eagle wings, and I have three different layers of the eagle wing to give it some dimension. Cutting those out and going to trim each of the wings around the uh, tips of the feathers and doing this instead of cutting straight little triangles to kind of follow the um, design I drew, I'm kind of cutting and then giving a slight curve so that they look a little more natural like a feather instead of like I said, just some little triangles here and there. Gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. And then coming back around, doing the curve in the opposite direction, as you can see, they kind of have more of a spade look to them instead of just a weird little triangle jutting out from the wings. Do that with each layer. Having those first three pieces cut out, we're going to trace them onto another piece of cardstock and cut them out as well. And that will give us two complete sets of wings. As I mentioned before, and I should have mentioned it, these are made with um, 150 pound, or sorry, 110 pound cardstock. And here I've got a piece of um, some cereal box cardboard, and we're going to be gluing these pieces together. Um, three layers between the large and the medium sized layer, we're going to be placing the piece of cardstock. Uh, you'll see why I'm doing that a little bit later. Other than giving it some kind of muscle mass appearance, we're also going to be using it as an insert so that we can make these wings removable from the main body of the rock. And here I'm gluing the piece of cereal box cardboard between the uh, layers of the wings, smoothing out all the bubbles. There's a nice smooth finish, has a very 3D look to this wing. And there's the two sets of them ready to go. Now moving on to the body, we're going to line up these wings here, kind of trace out kind of the general shape of the body we want. And then we're going to cut out this tail and we're going to fold and crease the tail to give it, uh, instead of just being flat, we want to give it some dimension and some shape. And now that I got the body cut out to about the dimensions I want, I'm going to kind of shape it, give it some contour, lining up, uh, making sure the wings are going to line up well underneath the shoulders. And then using this extra piece of SPX foam that I scrapped from one of my old buildings I had made in the past, I'm going to kind of lay it over top and I'm going to kind of trace around the shape of the body using a ballpoint pen. And then using one of my knives, I'm going to trace around that line, cut and shape a lot of the corners and edges off. And once it is satisfactory, we're going to slowly start whittling away at the other surrounding edges of this, kind of just round it up and uh, give it a more natural shape instead of these hard edges. And this is what it's going to look like after some work. Um, doesn't have to be anything special, just needs to fit there. Afterward, we're going to go along it with a ballpoint pen, and we're going to carve or draw some feather-like texture to it. Something like that. Initially, I had hoped to do this project using only cardstock, but I think that was a challenge that was a bit um, tricky, and relying on some of this SPX to give it some dimension is really going to make a difference. Using a couple extra scrap pieces I had lying around, I'm going to fashion a head. And just like we had done with the body, going to trace around the head, and we're going to whittle away at it until it is in uh, the general shape that we are looking for. And you can see on the uh, front and there, we've got a nice little flat area for the beak to sit. 
And then I also put a, a hole on top just in case I want to add a feathered crest to the top of the rock's head. And that should work just fine. Using the ballpoint pen again, we're going to put some eye sockets in. We're going to be using some small little foam balls to make some eagle eyes for this thing. We're going to mount it on there and give it some adequate time to dry because sometimes this, um, this tacky glue takes a little bit to sit with the SPX foam. Next I got some pieces of uh, the cardstock and I cut a beak-like shape out, traced it, flipped it over so that we have a mirror image, and we're going to kind of bend and glue this thing. It can be kind of tricky, but if you work at it, you can get a pretty nice result. Jumping ahead here a little bit, um, I got the beak and a lower uh, jaw of the beak mounted on, as well as cut out some extra feather textures that we're going to be putting on the back of the rock, kind of layered similar to the way we had done the wings. These ended up uh, proving a little tricky and I had to kind of cut them and shape them as I went. But this kind of gives you an idea. There's a little bit of that edge hanging over we'll have to trim later. But that's kind of the look we're going for. And we're going to kind of continue the pattern all the way down. And here are the feathers on the back layered, almost armadillo-like that you can see. Just kind of gluing and sticking them underneath the first layer. Using uh, my crafting knife here. I'm cutting some slits for the uh, wing inserts. These I have to get um, fairly wide and fairly deep. Just carving through this foam as uh, gently as I can so as not to tear the rest of the model. And kind of twisting it side to side as I'm going to kind of separate the foam a little bit just so that there's enough, um, there's enough room in there to have the wing inserts stay. The cereal box cardboard turned out to be a little too flimsy to hold the weight of the wings up, so I got this popsicle stick and I cut it into some segments and use these to kind of act as an additional support to kind of help hold the wings into the main part of the body. Glue in the sticks overlapping the cardboard onto the wing and straighten them out. Ended up giving it some more muscle definition. And you can see here as I apply another additional wing piece to kind of cover over the popsicle stick, it, it gave it a nice shape that made it look less like a flimsy wing and gave it some, gave it some width, which was really nice. Of course, I had to work these wings into the shoulders Took a little bit of time to get it where I wanted exactly, and it ended up having a little bit of a gap between the wing and the body, which I didn't like. So I ended up having to go back and make a much deeper cut into the main body. And here's the part that really started getting exciting, and that was bending the wings into shape, curling the feathers on the wing tips to make them look like the wind's blowing through them. Just overall gave it a really nice realism. I mean, look at that. It's coming along a lot better than I had anticipated. I was a bit worried that this would be a little clunky looking, but I think the more and more we're working on this, the more and more I'm liking it. And as you can see, you can take it apart to store it. And I added some more details to the head by adding some feathers over the eyes, kind of like some angry eyebrows, kind of giving a little Angry Birds vibe going on there, as well as a crest. Makes it look a little bit more fierce. And here I cut some talons out. A um, little, a little bit flimsy, but I was kind of, I had high hopes for this part of the project. Kind of just bending them into get that talon claw grasp shape. And I wasn't quite happy with the way they looked. It looked really bad. So I chucked those off to the side and 
made some bigger ones and this really made it look a lot better a lot more fierce a lot more terrifying these talons look like they can pick up a horse and a rider and carry it off after getting those on there letting them sit and dry i was ready to get on to the next step of the project i ended up reinforcing the legs with some of the uh, stir stick that we had used earlier um, the legs were just a little too flimsy when they picked up a miniature they just kind of bent a little bit and then i added some black acrylic paint over the whole thing and as the base coat and I will say hindsight is 2020. Uh, the legs were a pain to paint. They were really difficult. If I would have one thing that I'd change about this, I would have done the talons all the way before adding it to the final piece. And it would have just made it so much easier. Now here's a piece of plastic rod for some kind of balloon holder I found at the dollar store. The exact definition fails me, so I apologize. But I saw this and thought it might make a perfect base um, for a flying creature. And so finding the center point of the miniature for the best balance, I marked the spot with the ball with the ballpoint pen and then used the sharp part of this uh, balloon holder to kind of puncture the spot where I wanted the base to connect to the miniature. So inserting it and then finding a smaller piece here that I cut to fit in. And there you see it sits pretty nice, even with the wings on. Perfect. I have these little foam balls here that I'm gonna use for the eyes as well as putting together an interesting color scheme of silver and this midnight blue for the wings, as well as this orange, this bright orange for the eyes and this tan for the beak and talons. And then going up underneath each of the individual feathers, they stuck a little harder to um, the main wing than I had hoped they would. So unfortunately this cost me a lot of time and pain. Again, with the hindsight 2020 theme we're going with, I would definitely recommend painting each individual layer before applying them to the wing. Um, another oversight that I think would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of frustration. But there it is. You live and you learn. And here it is, all painted and ready to go. That fierce orange eye color and the silver and blue, as well as a kind of a light gray dusting over top of the entire thing, as well as adding some details and lines for the feathers to give it some more dimension. And there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making this project and as much as I'm going to enjoy being able to take this thing apart and store it so much easier. That's a great feature and a revolutionary idea that's going to help a lot in some of the future projects I make. If you guys have anything you would like to see, please leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's something you want me to make. I always am up for a challenge. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and maybe share this with someone who might appreciate it. But that's all the time we have for today. Happy gaming, happy crafting, and until we meet again.